Hey guys, I was playing this game in the middle of a thunderstorm and I went the opposite way of, um, how do I explain this? So, in the last episode, when we went to go save the two boys from that tower thing or whatever, uh, that path that I didn't go down, there were a lot of harder enemies down this path, which I decided to fight. And if you hear a rumbling sound, that's the thunderstorm. But, uh, I, I found a treasure chest at the end of it and I was like, oh no, I don't want to... Well, what if it's something important? So I... A white bracelet. What does that do? Um... Some sort of equipment. A bangle that emits pure white light to prevent blindness. Oh, okay. Alright. I also bought, um, new equipment for both Joshua and Estelle. But, uh, yeah. We're, or just the... Just their weapons. I didn't buy any armor. Um... I do have enough, uh... Oh yeah, I was supposed to check the chests out. This chest is full of disappointment. It's now full of disappointment. Oh, right. I need to go back and read the other chest that I've found. I forgot that someone had told me that I needed to do that in the, in the last episode. Yeah, but these enemies are way tougher. Like, as you can see... We need to we need to get rid of some of these things because otherwise this is gonna be a pain in my neck. Let's heal Joshua. He's likely going to be the most targeted. Unless of course I'm completely wrong. Alright, we need to cure her. Yeah, these fights like this is what I've been doing for the past um hour because I, I was going to actually record another episode but then a thunderstorm rolled in and I was like well I hate trying to yell over a thunderstorm so you know that's just what I have to live with nothing not a thing remains in the chest except a lonely dead spider oh not a fan Okay, there we go. Perfect. Alright, let's head back to town. We head over to the Melder's Orbal Factory. Modify trade slot. I opened one on Estelle. So I should open a second one on Joshua. I guess we'll go this way. Opened slot two. That one's gonna require 50 of everything. It requires 30 of everything, and that one requires 50 of everything, but this one just requires 30, so I can open up slot 2 on her as well. Awesome! So we got more slots open up on them. Um, I can't remember if it was my friend who told me to open up all the slots, um, but... I I know that I need to do it, so that's that's what I'm gonna do. Hello, you cool cats. This is Mina with another episode of Trails in the Sky. I know in the last episode we spent our time talking to all of the villagers and um, basically rounding up the last part of what I would call the tutorial. So I won't spend a lot of time talking to all the NPCs, but uh, I love this child, so I want to talk to her every time I I can. Hey, where did Cassius take off to? Um, he's gone away on business and won't be back for a while. Is that so? <sighs> Cassius was the one I was most focused on. That's too bad. Claire. I think even if Cassius dressed in a normal attire, he'd still shine as an adult male. By changing his style, he'd express himself as characteristic bu beau and s aside from the typical Joe. There's no doubt he'd be popular on a whole new level, too. Um, Claire, how old are you again? <laughs> She's a precocious one, isn't she? Alright. Now, let's go and take care of the, uh, the quest that we pick up. There was, like, apparently we need to talk to maybe this kid right here. Charles. This is really weird. Where could it have gone? Oh, excuse me, but can I ask you something? You didn't see a shiny rock around here anywhere, did you? Huh? A shiny rock? Yes, that's right. One that sparkles. You didn't see a rock like that lying around here, did you? Are you saying you lost something? Um, I don't recall seeing anything like that. 
Do you know where you might have dropped it? My mom was calling for me, so I ran over to the general goods store where she was. I know that I had it in my hand at the time. When I came back here, it was just gone. When you say general goods store, you mean Mr. Rinon's store, right? Did you look in front of his store? Obviously, that's the first place I looked. You don't need to treat me like a kid, you know. My, aren't you a charmer? Well, I already asked the Bracer Guild to help find it, so I'm sure it'll show up sooner or later. If you do happen to come across it, give me a holler straight away. I'll probably be around. Okay, so he's the one who lost his shiny rock, and he said that he lost it while he was over here at the goods store. What's the deal with everything being in short supply around here? Damn it, somehow I'm going to have to dig up a grade A product before I head on to my next business deal. It looks like Lindy just arrived at the landing port. I'm sure the products I ordered from Bose have come, so I've got to go pick them up. I wouldn't imagine that would have been... It's not like it would have gone upstairs now. See anything here? Wait, wait, wait. Huh? What's the matter? I wonder what that is. There's something shining down there through the sewer gate. You're right. Looks like something must have fallen through. The sewers? Don't tell me you forgot about the sewers already. You know, that smelly, monster infested place we were in not that long ago. Oh, right! Those sewers! We went in there during our practice training. We went through... We went there during our practical training, right? The entrance to the sewers should be just behind the chapel. We're so interested in what's down there. But how about we check it out a little later? Sure, let's do that! A little later, nothing! Let's do it now! This way. Alright. We're here found a quartz fragment. I see now. The thing we saw shining through the sewer grate was this. Seems like it. Quartz fragment, huh? Well, we, now we know why it was shining so much. The way it sparkles is so beautiful. This is made of septium too, right? Loosely speaking, yes. Let's talk about it later. This isn't really the place to be having a leisurely chat. I guess you're right. No normal person would want to stay here any longer than they had to. Oh yeah, there's a treasure chest over here. By looking inside this chest again, you flunk. Just kidding. Oh, that's funny. Alright. Oh wait, there's a treasure chest over here too. I forgot. That's right. The chest is empty because of you. Nice work, hero. It almost sounds like the TV tropes um, entry for a uh, nice job breaking it, hero. We got your shining stone. Hey! Is that rock? Could it be that this is the rock you've been looking for? Yep, this is the one. My shiny rock. Why is it all dirty like this? Hey, don't you have something else to say before you complain? You guys are bracers, right? You already paid your money to the guild. Therefore, I think I have the right to complain. That's not the problem here. Calm down, Estelle. He's just a kid. I know that, but... This quartz is what you were looking for, right? Hey, yeah, that's the one. This rock really is quartz? You mean the same kind of quartz that's in an orbiment? Yep, it's the same kind of quartz made of sepith. It's chipped, so it doesn't function anymore. I see. So, this rock belonged to an orbiment. What's wrong? You seem a bit out of it. Who, me? Oh, it's nothing. I'm glad you found it. I guess that's about it, then. Oh, that reminds me. I almost forgot. Here, take these. Receive drill meatball times five. My mom gives these to me and tells me they're healthy, but they're kind of bitter, so I can't stand them. Anyway, I appreciate what you did for me today. Seriously, what a cheeky little kid! I'm sure it's a difficult age for him, but 
I wonder why he was searching for that quartz. What do you mean? Now that you mention it, it does seem a little strange. But, oh well, everyone has something they think is important. Truer words couldn't be spoken. Perhaps that kid has interest in ornaments. I, for one, don't see what's so interesting about those overly complex gadgets. My brain goes numb just thinking about them. Except for the fact that you'll have to get used to them sooner or later. You won't be able to fulfill your job as a bracer if you can't use one. All right, all right, I'll try and learn. Yay, we completed it! Have you ever heard anything from your father about what when he was in the military? No, he almost never talks about anything before he became a bracer. Although, he's often told me about my mom. How about you, Joshua? Have you ever heard anything from Dad? No, that goes for me as well. Even if I ask, he always finds some way to evade the subject. Yeah, he does that, doesn't he? I see. At any rate, liberal is at peace. And there's nothing I want more than to have Uni live in the time of peace. Well, we are in a JRPG, so let me tell you what's not going to last forever. Peace. Could you imagine playing a game where, like, nothing eventful at all happens, like, period? It's just, like, a totally uneventful JRPG. That'd be crazy. There's probably a game out there that is like that. I'd totally love to know about it. My husband, who manages the mine, works so hard, so I need to work hard, too. When I think about the things this way, strangely, I don't feel lonely that we're apart. <laughs> I guess this is another way of showing our each other our love. I'm going to start Sunday school soon. I wonder if school is fun. I'm sure Estelle would tell you it isn't. Anyways, um, I'm going to talk to all the NPCs in town. If they don't have anything interesting to say, I won't tell you guys about it. I'll just cut it out. If they do have something interesting to say, well, then you'll know about it. Unbelievable. I came all the way here just to find that I wasted all this time for nothing. I can't find any buyers, and the shops are bigger cheapskates than I thought they'd be. I guess it's safe to say that backwater places will always be backwater places. This lady is really making me angry. Huh? And who are you supposed to be? And again, I don't really care who you are. I'll give you a deal, so how about you buy something? What? Would well, one of these wood carvings work for you? You won't find wood workmanship like this outside of the Calvard Republic. Calvard sounds familiar. Is that some famous store or something? The Calvert Republic is a country to the east of the Liberal Kingdom. I, I knew that! So Calvert made folk craft items are what you're selling, huh? I'm sure you'd find a lot more people willing to take them off your hands if you went to the Royal City. <sighs> you think so? I really thought some place in the boonies would like... I really thought some place in the boonies like this one would take would be a taker on these, but maybe I was wrong. Danger, danger. Anger meter rising. Oh well, I guess I'll try heading to Gransel sooner rather than later. Then again, what is my son Charles up to? Just when I thought I could get some help out of him, he ups and wanders off. Well, no wonder he was like that. Your name's already being mentioned among the customers. R really? How they may be in the country, we've got some famous people here like Cassius and Shara. Now I wonder if you're going to break into the big leagues. Oh, come on, Alyssa. Please don't put so much pressure on me. Turn it in here with... There we go. Reported results for Find the Shiny Rock. Good work. It seems like you completed your objective without any trouble. If you finish any other jobs, please come back and report again. So we still have to do this one. Um, a ferocious monster known as Pine Plant has been spotted roving the Milch Main Road. Milch Main Road. Wait a minute. What is that? Oh no, monsters appeared. Oh boy. Ah. Uh...
Okay, we need to kill the things very near here. Actually, let's kill that lily. Oh my gosh. Yes, we need to get rid of that lily for sure. Oh my gosh, it's really strong. It's really strong. Okay, that one's gathering power. End it. Oh no, they're all focusing power. Son of a... Uh... Uh... Oh my gosh. Gosh. Okay, kill that thing. Holy smokes! Oh my gosh. Got rid of that one. Okay, we have to get rid of get rid of that one. Oh no, it's still alive. Get rid of. Oh, son of a. Get rid of it. Why was this treasure chest so incredibly hard? God. Whoa, look at the rewards. Found a topaz talisman. You open the empty chest and stare inside. The chest stares back accusingly. The chest is empty, surprised. Chest is empty. Haha, <laughs> got you. Okay, that's 
a checkpoint. So where is this? Oh, is that it? Exterminate. Let's see what it's like. I'm going to clock up myself. I'm going to morale. Strength up. He's preparing to use art. Aqua bleed. It hurts quite a bit. But I expected it. Okay, it's got a lot of health, but I think I can do this. Self-destruct. Well, at least it died. Woo, level up. And more stuff! Exterminated mon monster on Milt Road. Hooray! And now we can head back and turn that quest in. Yay! Payment in Mira. Nice. And I gained BP. And I rank advancement to Junior Bracer 8th class. Received information quartz as a perk. Good work. It seems like you completed your objective without any trouble. Okay. What is the information? Information. Able to perceive enemy status. I guess I can slap that in here. Why not? Oh, I only need two more blues to unlock that one. Let's go do that real quick. All I need to do is kill a, a plant monster. Plant monsters, um, yeah, that one. That one should have the requisite blue sepith drop. That's another thing I noticed. I didn't say this earlier, but the monsters seem to have like a standard of what they drop. And this one always drops the blue and gold one. There we go. Open slot six. All right. Now both Estelle and Joshua have slots open. No matter when we come here, this place is always so tranquil. It's hard to imagine monsters running amok here. I certainly don't sense anything out of the ordinary either. Anyway, let's go ask someone here to fill us in on the details. I wonder if Tio is home today. Okay, um... Topaz Talisman. Um, a talisman crafted from a type of septium. The wearer's attack and defense will become earth-based. That's interesting. It's Joshua! Did you come to play with me? I wish I had the time, but I'm afraid today I'm here for work. Work? That's no fun if we can't play. <laughs> Maybe later if there's time. The kids here really like you, Joshua. Oh, Joshua, Estelle. Hi, Sherry. How have you been? You know where your mom and dad are? They're not home right now. Tio's outside if you want to talk to her, though. Where is Tio? Is she in here? Nope. Mary. Hi, Tio! It's been a while, hasn't it? Estelle? And Joshua, too. Did you guys come for a visit? Not exactly. We're here on Bracer business. We heard that you have been having some trouble with monsters. Estelle and Joshua explained that they are here to do their father's work because he's away. You finished all of your training. That's wonderful news. Maybe you can help after all. So there really are monsters giving you trouble, huh? Regrettably, that's been the case the past several days now. Thanks to which I'm suffering from a lack of sleep. Which means the monsters only come out at night. You're very perceptive, Joshua. It'd be better if you got all the details from my father, though. 
I imagine he should be back from delivering the milk and vegetables any time now. Oh, here we go. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Pre Perzel. How is everyone getting on these days? Well, if it isn't Estelle... Oh, wait. Hannah... Hannah's a, a lady's name. Well, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua... What brings you to our neck of the woods? Did you come to see Tio? We were actually just chatting with her outside. To tell the truth, we're here on an errand duty today from the Bracer Guild. Still hands Mr. Purzel the guild referral, and Joshua explains that they are taking over for their father while he is away. Is that so? But don't you think this job is a little dangerous for just the two of you to handle? I agree. I'd feel terrible if one of you got were to get hurt. Don't sweat it. We're bracers, after all. And taking care of monsters is right up our alley. The guild has even authorized us to carry out this task. If you wouldn't mind leaving it to us... We'd be more than grateful. Hmm. Well, all right then. Go ahead and have at it. Thank you very much, Mr. Perzel. Then could you tell us a little more about the monsters that have been wrecking your fields? I haven't been able to get a clear look at one yet, but they seem to resemble something like a chubby ca ca cat. As far as I can tell, three or four appear at night and raid our fields, gnawing on anything they can get their little grubby pa paws on. They don't seem threatening exactly, but they're extremely nimble. We've tried many times to capture them over the course of the last several nights, but to no avail. Sounds like a pretty strange bunch of creatures, if you ask me. Since they only appear under the cover of night, we'll have to wait for it to get dark. And how about taking a load off till then? I assume you'll be joining us for dinner, right? You said the magic word! You bet I will! I'm a huge fan of your cooking, Mrs. Purzel. Can't wait! You sure know how to please a woman who spends a lot of time toiling in the kitchen. And for that, I'll whip you up something special that'll live up to your expectations. Oh, that was delicious! Your mom's cooking as good as ever, Tio! <laughs> because she gets excited to cook whenever we have guests over for meals. I feel really bad for Joshua, though. With the little ones jumping all over him like that. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. Surprisingly enough, kids tend to latch on to him a lot. If anything, I'm more blown away by the fact that the children enjoy playing with such a stick in the mud. I think that's a bit of an over-exaggeration, don't you? He's definitely courteous and even a tad reserved, but... If you get to know him, he's really a caring young man. The fact that he's not self-conscious about it, too, gives him po points in my book. You really think so? Think about it. Those striking facial features, mysterious amber eyes, and lush black hair. It's only natural that he'd be a target for all the young girls. Is Joshua really that popular? Are you blind, Estelle? Rumor has it that more than just a few girls have asked to go out with him. I heard he turned them all down, though. I, I had no idea. Joshua never said a word to me about it. I don't know how I should even begin to describe his secretive nature after hearing this, but how utterly cruel of him not to confide in me. If he were a boy, I'd imagine it'd be a different story. But as a girl, I don't think that's something he would want to talk to you about. And the fact that you haven't fallen for him yourself is beyond me. Huh? Why would I? Still, you're in there, aren't you? It's about time to do our rounds. Uh, all right, I'm coming. I'll be back after Joshua and I get the job done, Tio. I'd like to continue this conversation then, okay? Oh, all right. Be careful out there, Estelle. That girl, she's either completely out of touch with the matters of the heart or just plain dense. Poor Joshua. He really has his work cut out for him. Oh, does Joshua have a thing for his cell? It seems as though the monsters always show up about this time. We better get outside and take a look around. <laughs> What's going on, Estelle? I've got to ask, Joshua. You don't happen to have... 
You don't happen to have any secrets you're not telling me about, do you? C come on now. Are you coming up with this stuff? Since you came to live with us, we've always done everything together, right? Even though we've had our fair share of fights, all good memories for me now, and what I mean to say is, I've come to think of you as family in every sense of the word. Still. So if there's ever anything on your mind that you'd like to talk about, I'm available to lend an ear. You know, about things like trouble with your love life and whatnot. What are you trying to say? N nothing I just wanted to let you know that I'm here to listen, and if you need someone to talk to, that's all. Let's hurry up and get out there so we can kick some monster butt. What kind of nonsense is Tio putting into that girl's head? Secrets, huh? Wow, it's really dark out here in the countryside. So, Joshua, how do you think we should go about making the rounds? Let's see. How about we start by checking around the house first and then move on to the fields, stable, and greenhouse? We should be able to cover the entire farm by doing it that way. Alright, let's go! No monsters here. Alright, let's keep moving. It's awfully quiet. All I hear are the bugs chirping. It doesn't look like they've shown up yet. I wonder if they're aware of our presence. Hey, Joshua, did anyone ever tell you the story as a kid? You know, the one about babies being born in a cabbage patch? Now there's another question entirely out of the blue. And no, I was told about an angel with silver wings who delivers them. Interesting. So the explanation for where babies come from differs depending on region, huh? How about we get back to work? Okay. I should've figured monsters wouldn't bother coming in here. The glow of the ornament sure give this place a romantic ambiance. It makes me feel like it was all worthwhile just setting foot in here. You definitely are a ditz, Estelle. At least it's better than being dense like someone I know. Psst, look. Meow. It's getting away. Hey, get back here, you little furball. I can still sense its presence. Stay put on the farm for the moment. Well, good, because it's about to get caught. I got him! I think it's time to teach this critter a lesson. Here's where our job really starts, so stay alert and don't let your guard down. Alright. It's preparing to use arts. Okay, it doesn't hurt that much. Honestly, the enemies that I fought before were, like, terrible. Get rid of you. Okay, that kind of hurts. Take that. Oh, it died instantly. Whoops. Easy. And a level up. Dirty carrot, flaky potato. Goodness, the work of a bracer is something else. You kids have done a fine job of rounding up these critters. <laughs> it was nothing, really. I wanted to ask you, though, now that they've been caught, what do you plan on doing with them? Uh, uh, I, I don't think they'll cause any more trouble. Now that we've gotten these, now that we've given these critters a good thrashing, I don't think they'll cause any more trouble. Estelle, how's that going to benefit anyone if we show these creatures any mercy now? We're here to do a job by exterminating the monsters, remember? But... In any case, we're here to do a, a, a job in Dad's place. If the same thing happens again, what will you say for yourself? I see what you're getting at, but... 
You know, it was only some vegetables that were damaged, so... What do you think about letting it slide this time? You know, after taking a beating like that, I'm sure they've learned their lesson. Tio, this puzzle. But in this case, I strongly suggest otherwise. I myself am against killing them, too. Whether it's us or them, the fact of the matter is, we're all living beings trying to survive on the same land. To some degree, I think we need to be mindful of the creatures living around us as we go about our daily lives. I know you may disagree with me, Joshua, but would you mind sparing these critters just these once? Understood. Since this is coming from the ones who suffered the actual loss, I won't object to your request. I'm really sorry about this, Joshua. I know you had... I know I had you two come all the way up here. I'll make sure to reinforce the fence and devise a way to prevent this from happening again. Then that's that! Alright, you critters. You better count your blessings. If we catch you around here again, you won't be so lucky. Now scram! Meow! Oh, good. Those things were kind of cute. Well, I'll consider this matter closed. Tonight has been a long night, so how about we head back to the house and hit the sack? The two of you are more than welcome to spend the night. Sounds good to me. I appreciate your hospitality. Man, I'm beat. It's really late, so how about we hit the sack? Joshua? What's wrong? I'm sorry. I made this situation really awkward for everyone. Huh? Are you talking about what happened back outside? <laughs> Don't sweat it. I guarantee you nobody thought anything of it. Really, your judgment was the most sound of anyone's. No, it wasn't. I'm just cold-hearted and indifferent is all. Even now, I still think we shouldn't have shown any mercy and simply put those creatures out of their misery. Unlike you and Tio, I don't feel any compassion. It's at times like this that I really begin to loathe myself. It's almost as if there's something wrong with me as a person. <laughs> Maybe some part of my heart is broken or something. Joshua! Don't you dare say things th like that about yourself! Estelle, I've watched almost everything you've done in the past five years, and I'm confident in saying that I know your strength and weakness is better than anyone else, probably even more than you yourself. I won't allow you to just disregard everything with a bunch of nonsense. I don't ever want to hear you say you're broken again. I'm sorry. It was foolish of me to say that. As long as you understand what I said, that's what really matters. But you know what? Believe it or not, I was happy to hear you admit how you felt. Why? Your real problem, Joshua, is that you always try to keep your feelings locked up inside. Whenever you're troubled or worried, you just go around with this nonchalant look and try to fix everything by yourself. That's a little upsetting for someone who's supposed to be your family. Estelle, I... Joshua, you were able to lay bare your own weakness today. You learned to trust in someone other than yourself, and for that, I'm happy. I, I don't know what your point is, but I'm amazed that you can just stand there and say something as embarrassing as that. <laughs> I've got a whole lot more where that came from. But how about we call it a night? After all this endless running around, I'm ready to drop. All right, then. Have a good night, Estelle. And thanks. You're welcome, Joshua. Sleep tight. Thank you both. You did us all a great service. Once again, I apologize for not turning out... for things not turning out the way they should have. Please don't worry about it anymore. We were able to learn a lot from this experience ourselves. If there's anything else we can help you in the future, please let the Bracer Guild know. He'll definitely be the first place we contact. Come and visit us again sometime when you're free, okay? I'd love to have you over for the night again when things are convenient for you. I'll treat you to some of my best cooking next time you come. Thanks for the invitation, Tio and Miss Purzel. We'll definitely come back and take you up on that when our workload settles down. Alright, how about we head back to the guild? After we report this one, we could start on the next. 
Sounds like a plan. On to the next one. Immediately an enemy encounter. Holy smokes! New quests! Mushroom Hunt. Um, from Orvid Company LTD. Uh, let's see. I am looking for a rare mushroom that grows only where there are rich deposits of septium in the ground. Should be an easy fun job. For details, please come seek me out. My name is Orvid, and I'll be waiting at the landing port. Um, Freddy? I'm looking for somebody to replace a malfunctioning orbit light in the road lampments of Milch Main Road. For details, please see me at the Melder's Orbal Factory. Father Divine, I'm searching for a flower known as a bear claw and savory and a savory pinion. The former is native to the forest of Mistwald, south of Roland, and the latter comes from insect-like monsters. Anyone who finds these items, please come see me at the Roland Chapel. Um, the soldiers stationed at Verde Bridge are set to undergo special training, and we're looking for a few good men or women to play parts of enemy soldiers. If you're up for the task, contact Chief Warrant Officer Ashton at the Verde checkpoint on the west end of the main road. Good evening. How did the job at the farm go? Um, we hit a few bumps in the road, but... Let me give you a brief report on the details. Joshua gives Ina a rundown of last night's events at the farm. Yay! Received payment! Oh, wow. Lots of money. Still 8th class. I see. So you ended up setting the monsters free because the Purzel family requested you to do so. I think it was premature on their part, but I won't pursue the matter any further. Is it okay to leave things at that? The mission of a bracer is to protect the civilians. The mission of a bracer is to protect civilians and uphold justice. However, there are many ways we can protect those around us, and there are many forms of justice, as there are stars in the heavens. As a bracer, it is your job to be able to discern these things. Indeed, our work has very profound implications if you think about it in that way. That's because we aren't an organization that deals strictly with monster problems. We also intervene when disputes arise between nations. To become a high-ranking bracer, one must have more than combat strength. A well-honed mind and flexible problem-solving skills are also required. A sharp mind and a problem-solving ability, huh? Serious? The road to the big league sounds a lot steeper than I originally thought. <laughs> Well, then your only choice is to devote yourself to working hard every day. And since you're both here, why don't I give you details on your next job? Those are the words I've been waiting to hear. I'm ready for anything, so what have you got lined up for us this time? Another monster that needs a good whipping? Not this time. The next job will be to entail the transportation of goods. And get this, your client is none other than Mayor Klaus himself. Really? A request from the mayor? I think it'll be alright leaving such an important task up to us? From what I've heard, it's a pretty simple job. In any case, I'd like you to speak with the mayor directly about the job details. Alright, I think that's gonna be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Trails in the Sky, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!